I was basically not trying to upset Lucinda, so I put them both in the second last and last. So I thought it was either, it was either Barry or Lucinda, and I thought Barry will be alright, he'll get over it. He was quite an anxious horse, wasn't he? I like that. He, he was, was he was he quite a nervous horse, but he I loved. Was them. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you look back at you, but yeah. But you were probably the housewife's favourite then as well, so they were all latching onto you, be hoping that you were going to get your national. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, Barry. Hello, welcome to the Inside Track, the debate brought to you by William Hill. Uh, I'm Leona Mayer here at the stunning St George's Hall on the day of uh, the Grand National Weights Lunch itself. And on this week's episode, we're going to rank our top five Grand National winners. I haven't got anybody better to help me do that than Barry Geraghty, Sir Anthony McCoy and Lucinda Russell. This panel have a very close affiliation to plenty of these horses, so it's going to be very, very interesting. Uh, the Grand National winners I want us to rank are Corrick Rambler, a One for Arthur, Don't Push It, Monty's Pass, and Tiger Rowell. Good luck. I feel the most sorry, I think, for Lucinda. <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a favourite. Do you have a favourite? I've got two favourites. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. Before we reveal our top five then, don't forget to subscribe to the William Hill Racing Channel. New episodes every single week. Okay, we ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> Leona Mayer. I don't yeah, want to look at anyone Mine's else. probably the best one, yeah. Thanks, Lucinda. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, let's start with you, AP. So Tiger Roll in number one. Well, he won two Grand Nationals and, you know, he won at, you know, we're all talking about the Grand National. But he did win two Grand Nationals. He won at five festivals. He, I suppose he did win a grade one. Don't know if any of the rest of them did. Don't think they did. Um, so he was probably the, look, he's the most famous one of the lot of them, isn't he? And he's the one probably most people talk about. So uh, you could go back into the old... Would he have won a Grand National that Monty's Pass won or don't put, even don't push it one? Based on how hard the National was then he, and I, now? I, he probably wouldn't even have got around. Well, the first year he won it, um, I remember going out in the race and there was two or three horses I didn't want to follow. And he was one of them. Because <laughs> yeah. he was... 15-2. Yeah. yeah, but he was, he was economical with his jumping yeah. and a little bit too much. So, like, that, yeah, he could there get... Are, there, were, there were small horses who could win around the Grand National course in the late 90s, the early 2000s. Mm. I don't think he'd have got around. I well, that's why I wasn't going to follow. Yeah, I don't think he'd have got around. But that's look, we're not here. To, he won two Grand Nationals, and the debate is. But we are comparing him to Don't Push It, uh, who, even the fans were quite big then. Monty's past two thousand three. I mean, you did well to get around the Grand National in two thousand three. That was kind of the thing for me. As I said it before, I, I, my first Grand National actually was a horse at school. Had won. He won the Hennessy on Chatham, and I remember asking Richard and Woody about riding. Chatham in the Grand National he goes and I, I was just about to become champion conditional 1995 got, didn't ride in the Grand National Martin Pipe with seven or eight runners I got asked to ride Chatham I asked Richard and Woody about Chatham he goes oh yeah ride him he said but he won't get around do you know what I mean so it was just it wasn't even a question of you didn't there's absolutely no hope of getting around anyway that's the difference of the challenges of the Grand National it has changed for the, but Tiger all did win two Grand Nationals so I have to give him that don't push it. He managed to get me around and win the Grand National. You he chose don't to push be. it, right? I, I didn't Close actually. I didn't actually choose don't push it. John Joe chose him for me. I probably was always going to choose, to, to choose him. I think he had good form. He did win a handicap chase in entry the year before, but he lost his way. He pulled up in the pretemps at the Cheltenham Festival. He was a talented horse, so he was more capable than the others I had, and he did manage to win a Grand National me on him. So that's mm -hmm. why he's in second. Corey Grambler. <coughs> um, I, I think I'd probably no. I actually, we send us very close. To no, him. <laughs> he he won he won the ultimate. Cheltenham was very good, and and was very impressive in the Grand National. So he was looked a proper Grand National winner. Monty's pass, yeah, I could have probably. Was, I was basically not trying to upset Lucinda, so I put <laughs> both of them at the second last and last. So I thought it was either it was either Barry or Lucinda, and I thought Barry will be alright. He'll get over it. Uh, my my thing with this is for Lucinda is I mean which owners like Gory Grambler and one for Arthur. Uh, what well, how are you gonna how are you gonna get on with that? Well, one she, well she has so that's our next. That's know, where we're moving uh, to how, next. How are yeah. you gonna get on with that? Whenever she's you out, but, she's after getting a few off Michael O'Leary anyway because he's been upgraded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell us which way round why Carrot Rambler above one for Arthur. Well, of course <laughs> Carrot Rambler is going to be. Uh, top of my list at the moment but only because you've still got him and he's not retired <laughs> and he's going to try again this year but um, 
I just thought he... It's funny because we were so worried beforehand whether he'd take to the fences and things. But from the about the third fence, you saw him just suddenly enjoy it. And he is a, a grand national horse, I believe. Uh, Tiger Roll, I have to say, I had to put him just above one for Arthur. It really hurt doing oh, that. God, that but bad, he did man. win two nationals. I sort of think if we'd... Because we, I remember we had one for Arthur just ready in the year of the uh, COVID. Um, so uh, he'd never really got to take on Tiger Roll again. But, you know, I think it's a it's a fabulous race. Then what did I do? Don't, Don't push, push it. Him. I did think to myself that he did get round with AP. But he was quite an anxious yeah, horse, wasn't I he? I like that. He, he was, was, he was he, quite a nervous horse, but he loved... Him. <laughs> well, <laughs> he looked back at you. But he... Uh, but he, he loved the fences, so that's... Uh, he did. He probably... It was quite a unique thing. Monty's pass didn't have such a big task because you were riding him rather than AP. Oh. But uh, he... Those, oh, the so I get last... I'm last for that reason. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, the horses. <laughs> but the, the horse... Uh, backward compliment, isn't mm. it? Yeah, lo- got looked after by you. But no, I think... Um, I think all of these are fabulous horses. I mean, to win a national at all is pretty decent, but Tiger Rolls won two and Correct Rambler is still there. Hopefully he hasn't finished the story yet. Yeah, one for Arthur, I thought, interesting you put the... I mean, how many Scottish national winners have there been? A couple, a handful. And you've had the two of the three, four that they've been. So surely that was unbelievable, one for Arthur doing it for you for the first time. Yeah, I think um, we're pretty good at training very slow horses, but I, d- I don't know. But he uh, he is such a brave horse, you know. He, he Again, he loved the fences. We're talking about a pretty unique race. It's not just a, mm. a straightforward uh, handicap chase. So he, um, yeah, no, I think he did well when the fences were even just slightly bigger than they are now. Barry? Let's see. Yeah, okay, so Tiger Roll we agree on. Karak yeah. second. Well, you have to recognise Tiger Roll obviously winning it twice. Um, and I'd agree with AP. I'm not so sure he'd have won one 20 years ago. Um, but still, you have to recognise he has done it twice. A brilliant achievement. Karak Rambler to win the Ultima in 22. To come back and win the Ultima 23. And then win the Grand National. Like that's a compliment to a very good trainer, so and a very good horse. So I, to me, like that's that's competing at a very high level. So I had to have him there. Uh, Monty's pass. I've gone with third. He won the Grand National by twelve lengths. He was fourteen lengths clear of Amberley House, who won it the following year. So to me, that reflects a strong race. Um, his owner did take a million off him. No, I'm sure. So he he landed a good punt in doing it. I'm sure. Um, JP and if you might have collected a few good off don't push it when he won as well, well. I actually don't know about that but I can remember to interrupt, but I can remember walking around at the start of the Grand National don't push it was 50 to 1 two weeks before the Grand after the attempts he was actually 25 to 1 I think like three days before mm. and I remember walking around at the start and David Casey um, who obviously was a very good jockey and is now Willie Bones as one of his main men was walking around at the start and he looked up at the bet and he goes how are you going to explain getting beaten in another Grand National favourite <laughs> and I went what do you mean he goes look at the price and don't push it but I think that was just a thing. It, it, there was momentum though, but there must have been a few quid for him yeah, yeah. to get him to get him in a price. Michael and then Porter was a big punter. He was a thing. yeah. He enjoyed a punt. Well, and he, 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 on yeah, he punted him from a long way out. Um, but you were probably the housewife's favourite then as well. So they were all latching onto AP, right. hoping that you were going to get your national. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, Barry. Monty's pass, I thought, was very interesting, as in to put him higher personally, because I thought was he he'd never gone anywhere near that far, had he ever? Had you ran over like three miles? He, he didn't get the trip in the goal or played over 2 6. <laughs> he had won the Kerry National over three mile on fast ground, but he was a doubtful stayer. But with the fences, then the way did they you, were. Did you, you obviously thought he was a doubtful stayer for you, Sean? He, as well as everything. Yeah, well, that, it, it was the thing you needed to protect, and I was in front of the second last, which was doing a good job in protecting <laughs> stamina issues. But um, it's. It was a case of the, the fence was so much bigger back then, mm. it slowed the race down. So a quality horse was going around in third gear. He wasn't going in fourth or fifth gear. So you were you were only cantering around. And that's how it was for him for the second circuit. I'm, oh, come back, fella, come back, fella. Don't don't get too, don't get involved too soon. And in the end, I just had to write, go on. If you want to go, we'll just roll away here now and win the national. It was that straightforward. Which yeah, is yeah. Bit, it's not how you dream it. And I had a proper look last night and his two prep runs for that season were over two miles. <laughs> it's two prep runs for anyone in the national way over two, weren't they? Yeah, but that'd be that'd be a standard kind of route to sharpen the over jumping, that shot. sharpen the jumping, keep them smart. He was a brilliant winner, Monty Spass. He was bombproof. Anyone could have ridden him. He was so good. He was dynamite. No matter how good a jockey you are, you need a horse that could actually save you and help. Operate. You need a very intelligent mm-hmm. horse because no matter how good you are, there's going to be one fence where 
one jumps across you or a loose one does something and the horse needs to be able to help you as well and you know that's the that's i think that's a little different you said about not following tiger roll mm. i think and you were worried about him getting the trip the speed of the grand national was different then because so many you'd spend so much of a, a circuit and a half looking all around you what's going on or or so i had my first ride in the national in 2000 uh and i actually had my first ride around there was in the top one the day before but when you rode horses back then, like you'd gallop down over the first few fences in particular, and you'd feel them grow yeah, yeah, about yeah. five strides away. Like they would be just getting on their hocks, paying attention, and then pick up. Now, maybe it's just because I was young and it was new to me, but it definitely in the latter years of my career, I said through the, the teens, you know, it's more like a park horse, yeah. quick and sharp, where back then they were really, they were, they were daunting. Do you think that horses still have to be entry horses now? No. Do you think? I, to a degree, maybe. Because I watched Corrick and he, mm. as I say, he went to the first couple of fences last year and then suddenly it was as if he went, oh, I get this, it's okay. Yeah, they start yeah. off a little bit, they're not quite sure. I mean, they are different fences, aren't they? They're still different. Yeah, they're different. Uh, it's, they have a different look to them, you know, with Norm Jump. But You've I think got 30, like, nine other horses yeah. around you and they're like... <laughs> but yeah. you need a fellow who's, who has the guts to be adaptable, yeah. to go and do it and rate her the same as, you know, just roll the dice and see if it works. I mean, you joked about don't push it getting around. I mean, both of yours were, well, it are very good jumpers. Very good. I hardly made mistakes. Yeah, but it's funny because around park fences, they weren't, the, neither of them are the sort of horses to stand off and really fly a fence. You know, you, you talk about horses being good jumpers and they're the ones that are stand off outside the wings. They, neither of them would do that. And I don't think you should do that around entry. You've got to get Economical, a little bit closer. Economically measured, yeah. Mm. If, you can, if you can just, if you have a horse who's concentrating on a stride and measuring his fence that you nearly don't have to do anything, you don't have to go forward or don't have to come back and he's just constantly find that rhythm. That's, it's consistency and that you'll have more in the finish if you can find that rhythm and consistency or if you're winging fences I remember riding Big Fella Tanks he was the best I ever rode around there as yeah. just for a trail yeah, going down to Beaches Brook the second time and like it was a good sized fence it was the year you won it yeah. and it was a good sized fence and just meeting it on a long stride like you would in the park horse lying on his neck roll pings it and he lands out back then there was a, there was a little a ridge bottom, if you like yeah. a dip down on land he landed out past it Hands on the flat on the far side. I was thinking, whoa, this is unreal. But he didn't see it out because, mm. you know, he was too, too exuberant. Yeah. 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 Um, I remember when Sku, when we first uh, got together, and he said about uh, for jockeys, for young jockeys, riding around the national makes a man of you. And afterwards, it doesn't matter where you come. It's not about necessarily just about winning, but just getting around afterwards, you have a real feeling of mm. achievement, of achieving something. Absolutely. Do you, did you feel that? Oh, definitely. Any any year, no matter what age. Like, even at pushing on to 40, getting around the garage. It was always important to get around. You know, you want to win it. You want to run as well as you can. But, you know, it's a small victory in just getting around. If you get unseated at the first... I was going to say, the first few, yeah. you're careful. You really would like to get further than that. Yeah, but if you if you, if you fall off one at the first, or fall off, I remember falling off Alexander Bank, where I think my second or third ride, the first beat just fell out the back door. You know, don't ask mm-hmm. me about that one, lads. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you get the moments. I, I rode Challenger look one year and I thought he'd be brilliant. And he literally ran at the first fence like it was on fire. Yeah. He put his head down and just sh- and he literally had butted <laughs> and, and landed. I nearly done a somersault, nearly landed on his feet the other side, done that much of a somersault. And yeah. it fell off Dark Stranger one of the years. He was favourite at the third fence, the ditch. So it's just it's just a fairly grim existence. And uh, you get, you know, you're waiting like thinking about it for however long to ride in Grand National and think of your chance of winning You're watching again. <laughs> and, you're, yeah. and you're like thinking, this is, you know, you just want to get in the car and go home. Yeah. <laughs> you want to be gone by the time the race finishes. Mm. Yeah, it's a very, it's a, it can be fairly grim when that happens to you. Especially, I tell you, especially when you've got a horse that's fancied and you literally fall at one of the f- mm. first two or three fences. Yeah. You don't even get any bit of excitement mm. or any bit of hope. It's gone for it. So besides the time that you rode a winner, because that would obviously be very momentous. Best ride, would it be Big Fella Thanks? You know, it was to be on one that you trusted and you'd know. He was just, he was so, like he had so much scope. He was, yeah, he was, he just, his jumping was so natural, so easy for him. But it was too easy. He paid the price and he didn't didn't get home. Um, I was third on slim pickings. Um, He ran a bit keen, jumped really well, but he burnt up by running too keen. They were good rides, um, but no, Monty's pass was, uh, yeah, he was, he was, he was the pro. 
And Vio, you say obviously don't push it. You joked about the jumping. Uh, Best jumping. A few jumper really in the good National. rides. Blowing wind was was. He got <clears throat> a loose horse ran across in front of him and Papi on the air. Red Marado won it, but he was third twice. Obviously third when I remounted him once, and he was anyone could have ridden him. He used to watch everything. He'd literally if he saw something on the ground, he'd stop. Yeah. You know what I mean? He he literally he was so careful about everything he did. Um. So I think he was a very unlucky horse not to win a grand. Look, there's loads of horses that are unlucky not to win a grand nationals, but. You know, you can. F it's different when you when they fall or they unseat or whatever they are. But he literally, he literally had nowhere to go when it happened to him. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, Barry's right. The first few Grand Nationals you're riding, you're just happy to get round in them. You know, I mean, it's just such a, a thrill. And as I said, when I rode Chatham that year, I got to the ninth fence or something. I was, it was, I even got up off the ground and thought that was great crap. <laughs> Buzzing. It just shows the, the 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 stupidity of youth, really. But. Um, <laughs> But yeah, look, it's a very different race. And if you walk down the street and someone, yeah, someone says to you, a jockey, and the first thing they'll say, have you ever ridden the Grand National? Yeah. The Grand National. So that's what's... The that's race what's, that everybody that's, knows. That's, that's what's different. And um, it's definitely a, a race that as a jockey you want to win. Um, crowning a, a national champion, in our opinion. I assume it's got to be Tiger Roll. We've got three Tiger Rolls. And if you didn't have Corrick at number one because he's your current national winner, you'd be Tiger Roll too, right? Yeah, I kind of get that. He's a, he was a f fabulous little horse, and he is, he was a little horse, wasn't he? Yeah. Tiger Roll, then. Tiger Roll is at the top of all of our list, our champion for the national in those uh, top five, full stop, probably. Uh, let us know in the comments uh, what your top five would be, and, of course, uh, who your champion would be as well. Thanks for watching the Inside Track, the debate. If you'd like to see us rank our top five modern-day trainers, click the link that's on the screen. Uh, this show was brought to you by William Hill, 18 plus, please gamble responsibly.